give Chris a round of applause really quickly. Go for it. Um, and, and Chris, thank you for that hug. And I, and I just want to let him know, both Jeff and Chris give amazing hugs. So if you haven't had the opportunity yet, make sure you do that. Um, and, and I should say, while I was preparing for this talk, um, besides thinking about my onstage live uh, tweeting, back, uh, back channeling, live uh, streaming hug with Chris, um, the other thing I started to think about was, and really mentally prepare myself, was I started, and I'm sure some of the other speakers can relate to this, is I, I started to channel my inner um, Sir Ken, whoop, where'd it go? Sir Ken Robinson uh, as, as my chance to be able to give my one big talk. And I had this image that I was gonna give this amazing eight minute or 10 minute talk that was gonna wow the audience. And then all of a sudden, the entire audience was gonna go and it was gonna start this eruption in the entire education community. And then I, a reality started to set in and I realized that there's some significant differences between myself and the dreamy Sir Ken Robinson. Um, reality number one is that we're 30 years born difference. I'll let you guess who's older. Uh, reality number two is that he's knighted and I'm not. Uh, and number three is that uh, I don't have an amazing accent. So, um, you know, I, that's okay. But what we do have in common, I'm sure a lot of you can share this as well, is that we have a strong passion for not just creating education reform, but for creating an education revolution. However, the difference is between myself and a lot of the other speakers is that 100% of my time, 100% of my focus and my work is spent on increasing engagement outside the classroom when we spend time with students outside the classroom in the informal learning spaces. And the typical student spends about 15% of their day in the classroom or working on homework. And then 35% of their time is spent on uh, sleeping. And then the last 50% is spent doing one of three things. One is working, number two is hanging around campus, and number three is poking their friends on Facebook. But that, those, that number one and number two are significant because uh, three-fourths of all college graduating uh, students say that the number one most significant learning moment that they had while in college happened outside the classroom. And there's massive amounts of data that shows the more involved the student is on campus, the higher the retention rates are from year to year and the higher the graduation rates are. And so when I talk about increasing engagement online, I can think of no better place to start than on a dance floor. Uh, okay, so hold with me for just a moment. I know what you're thinking. Uh, no, that's not me, and I promise you my dance moves are much worse. Um, but stay with me for just a moment as I, as I make the connection. How many of you out there have ever been to a dance at any point in your entire lives? Raise your hand. Take a look around. That's about right. Now keep your hand in the air if you have been to a good dance. Now keep your hand in the air. Now imagine that good dance for a moment. Visualize what that dance floor was like. Where were the people at? Where was the energy like? Who was bumping? No, we're not going there. Sorry. All right. So, um, who's been to a bad dance? Raise your hand. Now visualize that dance floor for a moment. You know, you look out on the dance floor. It's so empty. Uh, it, it, it's like a classroom in the summer. You're like, no one's there. It's just a dead dance floor. But we have good dances and we have bad dances. And you can go to any dance, whether it's here in New York or all the way over to Asia, and you'll know that the most engaged people in the dance floor will always go towards the center. And then the least engaged will pull, push out to the sides and have their arms crossed and go, try to get me to participate. It looks like this. This is a bad dance with a small number of fully engaged people on the inside and a huge number of apathetic people on the outside. And this is a good dance where it's equal numbers of engagement from the middle all the way out to the side. And what's interesting is that colleges actually operate the same way, where this right here is a good campus. And this right here is a, well, not a bad campus, a leadership opportunity, okay? There's no bad campuses. Um, but you know, what's interesting though, is we think about this, this idea of, of comparing college campuses uh, to dance floors, we can also start to compare, uh, well, let me give you a visual, just for the, uh, those of you who wanna take a bad dance and make it a good dance, because most college campuses look like this leadership opportunity right here. Because according to a national survey on student engagement, 60% of students will never participate in any college-sponsored activity. We're hosting a dance where the majority of our campus is standing off to the edge with our arms crossed, looking at us going, try to get me to participate. Where we know that the research shows that the more involved they are on campus, the higher the retention rates are and the higher their graduation rates are. For the, the good news is, if you wanna go from a, 
excuse me, a bad dance to a good dance. There's actually four simple steps to make that happen. Step number one, introduce yourself. Step number two, introduce people to each other. Step number three, make small relevant groups. And step number four, get out of the way. It's not about you, it's about them. You get to be the facilitator of engagement versus the gatekeeper of engagement. For the visual learners in the room, it looks like this. You're the giant of the dance floor. You connect two people together, you make a small group, they connect, you get out of the way because that right there turns into a dance floor that looks like this, which turns into a dance that looks like this, and you know that this is a great dance because you got a guy hanging from the chandeliers at the top. Woo! You know, that, so, but this is also a great campus because the more lines, relationships, and connections we have in, within our community, within our culture, the harder it is for someone to leave and be disengaged. What's interesting, so just to recap what I talked about, this is actually a long program, in one slide is no and yes. And what's interesting is that we take this concept of dance floors, we can actually bring it over to the world of what's happening on the internet right now as well. From web 1.0 to web 2.0. In web 1.0, I was a company like the New York Times and I pushed content out, you consume that content, and then that was the end of the relationship. And then Web 2.0 came along, and then all of a sudden the, the companies started to realize that, wait a second, people are less interested in connecting with us than they are in, interested in connecting with each other. And so the most engaging companies online, online the, the most engaging sites online, are the sites where there is no there there, there is no center to that community. It's all about people connecting with each other around shared interests. And as we move from this web 1.0 to this web 2.0, we start to realize that this shift starts to create more engagement and exponentially grows versus this. And when schools are starting to leverage online tools and how they leverage online tools, they tend to go through this process from web 1.0 to web 2.0 in three different stages, from a broadcaster to a converser to a connector. And to give you a quick example, on the broadcaster stage, we'll play a quick little game. You know you're a broadcaster if. And it looks like this. You know you're a broadcaster if. Everything on that page is your logo over and over and over again. You know you're a broadcaster if. Everything on, there are no comments and there are no likes on anything that you have posted on that page. Why this doesn't work is because the Facebook newsfeed algorithm says that your, the content that will show at the top of my newsfeed is the content that is most relevant to me and most engaging to me. And if I don't connect with any of your content, that will never show up on my newsfeed. And then we start moving into the converser stage. And this is where I push out content, you respond back to that content, I respond back to you, and then that's the conversation. So we post questions like quizzes and polls and, and uh, uh, um, uh, status updates where we're trying to engage people on a one-on-one. -on -one. And then we start moving to the con uh, connector stage where I become the facilitator of engagement. And on this stage, I'm, Lake, Lake Forest College, what they do is they do activities that they're trying to connect people together around shared interests and then get out of the way. So they ask questions like, have you started any Facebook groups to connect your classmates while at Lake Forest? Phil did, uh, here's the link. Uh, have you met, uh, connect around shared interests and then get out of the way, you become the facilitator of engagement, not the gatekeeper of engagement. Now while Facebook, while 93% of college students have accounts on Facebook, 63% log in every single day, it's not, and yes it is the dominant playground online right now, the other tools can't be ignored because they're giving really interesting data back to us. For example, on Twitter, Twitter is a great example of a site where Facebook is a closed system, Twitter is this open system, so that produces some interesting results. And one example, uh, comes from a friend of mine named Ed Cabellan, who is from Bridgewater... Oh, we got a celebration, all right. He comes from Bridgewater State Col uh, University, and Ed is one of those champions of social media and engaging students outside the classroom. How can we increase that engagement? And he had an interesting example or run-in with a student on Twitter. So he has uh, alerts set up for any time a student uh, sends a, a, a note about, or talks about his school. And so one day he gets this alert in his inbox and he looks and clicks through to see the tweet and this is what shows up. It's from a student, surprise, surprise, the BSC bookstore also sucks. They don't even have all my books and the lady was all annoyed by me. So Ed takes his two official campus accounts and befriends her back and then she posts this status update. 
LOL, two BSC official Twitters are now following me. I wonder if they notice how much I trash talk the school. So Ed responds in one of the official uh, sites. Yep, totally, but it's okay, no worries. Hey, and great blog, by the way. And she started, and so he clicked through and read her blog. And then she responds back, whoa, I just gained like 10,000 respect points for BSC. Thank you, smiley face. Awesome. Then they had a direct message conversation back and forth, and then he post, uh, she posted one more status update that said, okay, forget everything I've ever said ab about bad about BSC. They DM me and claim to have read my blog, feeling much better about my school now. She is now one of the top student bloggers for their website. Ed took this learning moment, this student who was a hater of the school, and in that short period of time turned her into a champion. Do you think these conversations happen on Facebook as well? Well, right, know that he doesn't have the chance. Do the students say this kind of stuff on in in Facebook? Yeah. yeah. However, we don't have the opportunity most of the time to be able to see it and interject in that moment. Where on Twitter, we have that opportunity. So um, in closing, before you uh, leave here today and before you give me a standing ovation like I dreamed about last night, um, <laughs> thanks for laughing at that, I appreciate it. <laughs> now I feel awkward. Uh, I want you to think about two things to take away. Number one is where is your school right now? Where is your school? Are you a broadcaster, converser, or connector? And then question number two is what steps do you have to do to move towards that connection phase? With that, I thank you guys for coming here today, and I thank Jeff and Chris for participating in this and helping out. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs>